Back again, we're here with Johnny Statula playing with the Almond Betts Band tonight. And uh, I wanted to talk about this guitar with Johnny because he has some of the greatest slide tone I've heard, uh, I've seen live, and he's also a guy who plugs straight into his amp. So we want to talk a little bit about guitar, a little bit about technique. Johnny, what's up, man? Thank you very much. What's up, Nick? Good Thank to see you, you, man. So give us a little backstory in this guitar. I remember you telling me earlier about the whole Craigslist deal, and I'd love to hear. Yeah, it yeah. No, it's, I mean, if this guitar I've had for about ten years, and I found it on Craigslist. Uh, it was just completely destroyed when I found it. Uh, it had like broken uh, pickup rings, it had a broken tuner, there was like gunk all over the fretboard. Yeah. Um, so what I'm trying to say is I got it for cheap. Yeah, great Craigslist score. Yeah, it was totally trashed. Uh, most of the relic you can see on it, like which I think makes it look like an old guitar, Yeah. was already there when I got it. It's not. I don't really thrash around and like, you know, too much, but it had a vibrola on it. Took that. I didn't really. The cool thing was I didn't. I wasn't precious about this guitar. So I took that off. Put a stop tail piece. Put in pickups that I like that a friend of mine wound. Great. And okay. they're like PAF spec. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, was this a cherry guitar? Yeah. It so was, that, this is from all those outside gigs playing. Yes. It uh it it it's gotten like this golden brownish color to it now, That's which is pretty hip. Um, if you pull off the pick guard, you would see. Underneath, it's like a red cherry SG. Yeah. And this is a, a custom shop. It's a weird, yeah. It's a weird custom shop. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a little bit before uh, the historic time yeah. with Gibson, but they did uh, what was it custom art, and the custom shop was making guitars. Yeah, 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 yeah. The story that I was told when I bought the guitar was that uh, Gibson had made two of these guitars for Joe Perry, which I've never seen Joe Perry play an SG, right. so that's cool, I guess. And anyways, Joe played them both, picked one. The guy, the guy that was there grabbed this one, and I found it. On a strange, Six years later, strange LA night. There you go. Pasadena. God bless California. America. It was raining. It was pouring rain the day that I bought this guitar, which it never rains in California. And then the day I got it, uh, this taken off, it was pouring rain. The day I got pickups, it was pouring rain. So I named it Stormy. Oh, there you go. I so like that. Insane. Yeah. And uh, as far as we said, do you want to give up what pickups you swap in there? Or is that yeah. kind of a secret? No. I mean, it's well, it is and it isn't. They're they're PAF style pickups. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine made them. Okay. And wound them. And what do you look for in a, in a in a pickup? Basically, just trying to get as close to that old PAF sound as you can. Pretty much, and that what that is to me is just the clarity. Uh, I needed a little bit more output. I don't use pedals yeah, and stuff and yeah, so which is great I admire that they're not super hot though they're they're probably around if I remember about 7.6 8.4 so right run of the mill PAS yeah a2 magnets um, anyways I tried about two or three sets that mm -hmm. we we made and we experimented with this set has been in here since you know for this is as long as I've had the guitar once I found the set I just left it alone if I can make a recommendation, and I'm obviously I'm not trying to step on your tone, but yeah. um, I would like to get you in touch with uh, Sebastian from Vintage Inspired Pickups. Yeah. Great guy. Cool. Great pots, great pickup builder. Um, just really, he finds the ways to kind of bring uh, lift a blanket off of the tone and kind of like just get that extra 5% out of everything. Totally. So yeah. I'll set you guys up. But cool, man. Yep. You said that you are a guy that plugs straight in, and that's something that I admire. I'm a big yeah. fan of Ronnie Earl, Jimmy Vaughn. Me Even too. Derek Trucks, you know, all those mm -hmm. guys that can get the most they can from a, a well maintenance, well working amp yeah. with a twenty foot cable plugged right in. Just plug in and, go. and do you find do you find that it it limits it? There's some limitation, but there's also some freeing ability because you have nothing else to focus on but your technique. I feel more connected to the instrument and and the amplifier yeah. where there's nothing in the way. Like I. And I love pedals too, like that. I mean, and I, I admire, you know, the sounds that other guitar players are able to get out of them, you know. Um, but there's something very immediate and direct. I feel connected. Like I feel like the amp is as much an instrument as the guitar is. Mm -hmm. um, and when you don't have anything point. in the way, yeah. you're just you're kind of playing off those two things. And it, it's you know it, it makes you work a little harder. Maybe being a guy again that pl that's plugged straight in. Is there anything that you're you're doing with your amps maybe as a biasing a little harder or certain tubes you're using? Yeah. You're trying to get some touch sensitivity out because 
you, you play a lot of great slide and you get a lot of that really greasy slide tone and mm -hmm. you're just plugging in through maybe a super reverb I think I saw you with? Right now I've got a, a concert. It's okay. a 63 That's the one concert. Yeah, yeah. you guys tell me about that last time. It's basically a super reverb. Yeah. Um, it's before before the super reverb. Doesn't have reverb. Okay. Has a solid state rectifier in yeah. it, which is very unforgiving and immediate yeah. and direct and punchy and rocking. Um, I wasn't looking for a concert when I got, you know, I just was plugging into a yeah, bunch of, yeah. uh, one day in a, in a music shop, plugging into some old blackface vendors and, and you know, works. like this pro, that sounds pretty cool, Vibrolux pretty cool, you know, and I've, I've played a lot of those amps and then I plugged into that particular concert and hit a chord and was like, whoa, what's going on there? Yeah. I don't know what's going on with that amp. It just works and it sounds, it rocks. So I, I ended up buying it because it sounded good, not because I thought you know, it would be cool. I hear that more with, with guys that, and this is this is not a dig at anybody else, because I'm more of, I, I haven't focused enough on my quality of playing, and I, I'm, you know, man enough to admit that. But some of the guys that sound beautiful, it's almost like they could plug into a microwave <laughs> and get this amazing tone, <laughs> and they're not, they're, hear me, they're not that. tech savvy. Yeah. They don't, they don't care what the amp has, they don't care if it's a new old stock tube, right. they don't care if it's a this or that, it just, it's musical to them, and I really, you know, guys like you, guys like JD, a lot of guys lately are, have really inspired me, you know, to to kind of like search for, search for nothing in a way. Like, you, it's it's got to be the guitar, or I got to have a heavier string, I got to have this. There's so much of that that mm -hmm. gets involved. It kind of takes away from the playing, the main principle. Yeah, it can. I, I go. It goes in waves for me, and I'm. I think I'm playing at my best when I'm not thinking about any right. of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, you. You you live and you go and, and every once in a while like well I want to try different strings or I want to try mm -hmm. you know I want to try some different pickups and then you're you're listening to J D Simo every yeah, night yeah. like well maybe I need a fuzz pedal now yeah yeah <laughs> well the great thing about that too is like like you're saying earlier about having such a direct correlation with just the guitar and the amp those minor adjustments are really noticeable because that's all that that's all the only factors that you you have in there if you change yeah. a string brand. Or you adjust your action, or you adjust your pickups. You You're kind really of, hearing that. Yeah, you get. It, for me, it got really into like getting focused on the the core of everything. Okay. Even the cable. Yeah. Like I, you know, you've lost your mind when you're like. <laughs> oh, this cable sounds better going being, this way. Yeah. Even cables yeah, yeah. and length of cables and brand of cables and and these things and and actually perceiving that one is better than mm -hmm. the other. Which I did and, yeah. and do, you know, yeah. or not liking a pedal in front of your amp because it sounds better to go direct, or actually liking a certain kind of pedal in front of your amp yeah. because it has a cool buffer and now it sounds better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I don't know if any of that shit matters when you're actually playing a gig. Yeah. But we obsess over it, and I'm guilty, and you know, I think that's and I think that's part of the fun. Yeah, when we get and it keeps you inspired. You get that you know? tone hunting term. I mean, I think yeah. that's just part of getting bit by the bug and. Like, you know, in your situation where you just, you know, you weren't banking on the guitar and it suddenly became your guitar, it became right. your instrument you're playing and you, you weren't, you weren't banking on buying that concert and you plugged yeah. into it and you were I like, definitely wanted an SG. That was, yeah. that was a certain thing. I had played Les Pauls for quite a while, uh, Strats before that. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow, fellow and, brother. Yeah. And, um, and... To me, the SG kind of bridged the gap between those two okay. guitars a little bit. Body shape. Just lighter. Uh, the neck felt a little faster. You know, it's definitely a Gibson. It's definitely a, a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. But at the time when I was looking for an SG, it just felt like, oh, this is a little different than a Les Paul, but I still want that tone. I want that big, yeah. fat PAF tone. So that's kind of what got me here. And then I just, it's gone from there. And, you know, so great. Something it's you just become connected with. It's a treat to hear you play. And you. Seriously, you know, we met we met in uh, December mm -hmm. at the Beacon. Beacon, yeah. And uh, it's just it's a great to listen to you play. I appreciate you being on the channel. I'm glad yeah, you're here. Yeah, man. If anybody wants to search you out, uh, JohnnyStatula.com, Instagram at JohnnyStatula. Almond yeah. Bets, you're on Almond tour with those guys. Com. They want to hear any kind of clips. You can hear it all there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. Man. Thank cool. you, guys. We'll talk soon. Peace.